Acasis are no new players when it comes to high performing external SSD enclosures and I was left impressed with the TBU405 Pro M1 which came complete with an active cooling fan. Take it a step further though and you get this, a dual enclosure complete with a mini docking station, the TBU405 Pro Max. The TBU405 lineup comes in several variants with fan and fanless designs, yet if you're after more, this Pro Max model could be exactly what you need as it throws in some added functionality too, bringing it into docking station territory at the same time. We maintain that typical Acasis high quality aluminum alloy construction, which also helps dissipate heat of course, but otherwise it's a pretty straightforward design. Alongside some branding on the top side, we have this corrugated surface with the main exhaust fan housed in between. On all sides, we have more venting holes, acting as a means for getting cool air into the device and circulating around the internals, while the warm air is then pushed out of the top thanks to that built-in fan. A pretty common design, and it's one that's worked perfectly well across other drives in their lineup, so I can't see any issues here either. Rubber pads act as feet on the bottom, stopping the unit from sliding around on your desk, whereas on the business end we find a dual USB-C 40 gigabits per second port layout, compatible with Thunderbolt 3 and 4, as well as the USB 4 protocol, the second port acts as a pass-through for connecting to other devices, and that's where the docking nature of this drive comes through, another 10 gigabits per second USB 3.1 port on the side, as well as a single 4K 60 HDMI port on the other, mean you can connect other devices or monitors should the need arise, which is a nice added touch. The drive will need external power to run though, so this isn't a host powered enclosure I'm afraid, which is important to note if you're after true portability, but a cable and power adapter are included and can be connected to the 100 watt power delivery port on the remaining side, which will pass through 60 watts of power to your connected host. Finally, we find a small button just alongside that can be used to switch the internal cooling fan on or off. Very handy for moments when you need complete silence. All in all then, it's a pretty straightforward and simplistic design. Nothing wrong with that at all, and although it's relatively lightweight, it is a tad larger than some competing enclosures due to that dual SSD capability, as well as those added docking ports too. On the flip side, opening and installing the drive is super easy. And that's thanks to a completely tool free design. Simply pull the top away, which does take some force, and you're presented with the dual NVMe slots. That's really all there is to it. While there's not much more to see here, if we delve in deeper and take a look at the opposite side of the board, just out of curiosity more than anything else, we'll see that Intel certified chipset in the middle, complete with another smaller board that runs the SSD interface, which is unusual. But nevertheless, both heat generating chipsets have thermal pads for heat dissipation directly to the external surface, so no issues there. Anyways, with everything back together, we have space to install two SSDs of choice, up to 8TB in capacity being supported, so that's a total of 16TB across both. 2280 size drives fit best, although plastic adapters are supplied to elongate smaller drives should you prefer. Either way, the drives slide neatly into place and are held in position with rubber grommets at the opposite end. I've installed different capacity drives for a reason here, which we'll come back to shortly, although thermal pads are included, which I'm going to skip for testing too. The actual top plate incorporates a cooling fan, so cool air is drawn in from the sides, down over the SSDs, while the fan then draws that now warm air up and away through the top. We'll see how this fares shortly. Although I do like the power pin arrangement here, linking both halves together and passing power to the fan. No small wires or cables to fumble about with. Instead, the plate snaps down on top of the enclosure, with spring-loaded bearings holding it securely in place. Of course you'll want to connect the supplied power cable before connecting the drive to your computer. And after initialization, both drives will be available as normal. So I have both my different capacity SSDs available here as individual drives, which may be perfectly fine for your setup, in case you wanted to use one as a backup and another one as a data drive for instance. Nevertheless, a speed test using the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test software doesn't actually provide us with that promised 40 gigabits per second speed as one would assume. 
I mean, although this is still fast enough for general data transfer and day-to-day -day usage, I'd expect speeds of around 2500 and above here, whereas as we can see I'm getting speeds much lower. The reason for that is because each SSD slot or bay actually runs at 20 gigabits per second. In order to unlock the full 40 gigabits per second speed, you'll need to use a software RAID solution in order to, in effect, marry both drives together to work in tandem as one. The case supports software RAID 0 striped or RAID 1 mirrored arrays, although you'll want to stripe to get that full speed of course. After which we can select the two drives. They are different capacities remember. And then we can give our RAID array a name, although note that although I have 3 terabytes of physical capacity installed in total, when using RAID we revert to the lowest capacity drive and lose out on the rest of the higher capacity one. So here I lose 1 terabyte of capacity from that 2 terabyte drive, an important point to note if you want to get the most out of your SSD drives. Anyways, while configuring with macOS is relatively easy with disk utility, configuring with Windows requires more steps as the terminal is needed to remove the EFI partition before a RAID system can be created. There are instructions provided in the quick start guide or you can find tutorials online, although once done we can see our two drives now paired together in a single RAID array. So in this configuration the same Blackmagic disk speed test software provides us with the higher speeds that are more in line with what we would expect from a 40 gigabits per second interface. Since both drives are working alongside each other, each with its 20 gigabits per second interface providing us with that full 40. Just out of interest then, I did go back and create another RAID array, this time selecting the mirrored option. In essence this duplicates your data, storing a copy of your files simultaneously on both drives, acting as a means of backup. Should one drive fail, your data is still on the second. Notice however the total capacity between here is even less, 1 terabyte in total. The other drive is there, it's just a kind of hidden backup working in the background. In basic terms the rule of thumb here is when using any RAID setup, use volumes of the same capacity to avoid any wastage. Anyways, because the system is writing data to two drives simultaneously with this setup, notice how the write speed is considerably lower, although the read speed remains nice and quick since it can read data across the two drives at the same time, it's just the write speeds that are affected in such an array. Going back to the physical drive though, note that you do need to manually press the side switch to power the fan on every time. While fan noise is minimal, it's actually not very distracting at all to be fair, there's no actual status light so you won't know when it's spinning unless you put the case next to your ear or listen out very closely to ensure it's on. And with that fan running throughout longer usage sessions I've had no overheating or drive throttling issues at all. So the cooling system is clearly doing its job rather well, otherwise everything else seems to work as normal and you still have all the extra ports for some albeit limited expansion too. So with a stylish yet functional design and a super easy tool free NVMe installation procedure, if you have access to your own NVMe SSDs and want to use them as an external device for your computer, the Acasis SSD enclosure performed well throughout testing. Just bear in mind the 20 gigabits per second limit when using drives individually. You'll want to RAID drives to get the full speed advantages which comes along with its redundancy concerns too. So as long as that doesn't bother you, coupled with a very slight fan noise, it makes for a great overall performer.